everybody, this is Jennifer, and today I'm making a foaming bath with the recipe I'm using. It's coming from uh, Lana Solanich. I'm not sure I spelled that right. Uh, but there'll be a link to the description in the description below um, for that. So I've just got in here, I've got six ounces of glycerin, five ounces of SCI, which is a coconut based um, surfactant, three ounces of cocoa B, which is another surfactant, a very gentle formula, and three ounces of propylene glycol. So I'm just going to melt these down and then I'm going to add an ounce of water and an ounce of stearic acid. All right, now while that's heating up, I thought we'd talk a little bit about why make foaming bath whip. I want to know what's in my stuff and I'm always um, wondering exactly what exactly is in them. So I'm going to give you two recipes I found online that were free and a link to a, a paid recipe if you don't like um, either one of these recipes. Um, they seem to use similar ingredients just in different varying quantities and um, so we're all, I'm also going to make some cream soap and see if we can use it in some of those same applications. Um, I like to make a, a frosting with my melt and pour. I like to um, make foaming bath whip um, as a cream soap and um, whipped body butter. This is, it's a neat, versatile product to have. So hopefully um, I'll give you some ideas and save you some time so you don't have to keep looking if you can't find that perfect recipe. So uh, we're going to make it the detergent way or the, the way that you buy it. Um, when you when you order it from a company like Rambleberry or Sapphire Blue or whoever you get your supplies from, most of them carry a um, foaming bath whip. Um, this is the standard recipe. Um, and I'm also going to explore whether or not we can use a cold process formula that's actually, you know, soap based, which is what we as soap makers often prefer because they're a little more gentle. Um, not always. You have to test your products. Uh, so yeah, so this is warming up nicely and I've seen it done um, on the in the microwave and this particular recipe says it cannot be done in the microwave so we're doing it on the stove top um, we'll see we'll have we'll compare the two um, I'll be doing the chemistry connection bath whip recipe and then the foaming um, foaming natural soap cream soap as well and uh, yeah see if we can whip them up and do neat things with with all three of those. All right, so uh, hold on and I'll come back when everything's melted and uh, we'll do some more formulating and let it cool and maybe maybe try one of the recipes. I need to make some cotton candy soap anyway, so maybe <laughs> I can do that. All right, so maybe if I can find a great, do a great cotton candy soap. Okay, just hold on. All right, so I thought I'd let you see the stages. The eye is one of the main ingredients in a shampoo formulation that I'm also working on. So, um, you know, kind of some nice pretty poured shapes for a solid shampoo. Um, so if you want to make those, it's actually, you know, just another thing you can do with, with the actual product. Um, as you can see, you can get it in different forms. This is the powder. The powder dissolves more readily, I've been told. And um, you can do it on a double boiler. I don't really think it's necessary, but I could be wrong. We'll see as I progress with creating this. The key though is to make sure it is completely dissolved. So no little grainy grainies or you'll have grainy grainies in your finished product. And if you don't want that in your whipped body butters and uh, um, foaming body butters and then you're going to want to make sure that every little bit of this um, is dissolved in the cocoa bee and glycerin um, okay, so it is dissolved now we're going to add and it's very 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 hot nearly boiling hot now we're going to add an ounce of water and an ounce 
a stearic acid. Make sure you get it all in there because it's going to be important as a stabilizer as well. This is what gives um, shaving soap its stability. We'll be making shaving soap later. Um, got a whole men's line already concocted. I just need to find the time to. The kids are asleep. <laughs> and then I'll share it with you guys too. So I think that's about all I can get off of there. Get another. Yeah. Meh, meh. All right, so that was really advantageous. Now, <clears throat> the last ingredients we need to add can't be added until it's cooled. But we can check um, pH. Now, she insists that it needs to be at 7, but... Um, I'm not worried. I'm, I'm just going to check to make sure it's um, skin safe. And uh, if that's not good enough, then we'll know when I go to use it. And then I can melt it down and, and look at the, um, the uh, pH to see if that might be what the problem is. But uh, I don't have any pH strips. I do have phenolphthalein. So out of necessity, I'm not actually going to be able to do anything other than check for um, whether or not it's skin safe. All right, so we're going to put that on, and we get a clear result. So I am not worried. There's no excessive um, free plastic materials in there. Alrighty. So there we have it. Now all that's left to do is to get it to cool. And I'm going to take it out of the hot container to cool. And um, once it's at the proper temperature, I will, and still liquid, I will add the um I burned my I burned my uh cloth. I'll add the uh derma bin preservative at point five percent. All right, so I'll call and come back as soon as this is ready. Okay, so I was a little bit, there we go. This particular preservative, um, paraben DU, can be added hot. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And stir it in. All right, so it's, oh, nearly set. Um, I thought I would just take some time to compare the two. Now, they don't look the same to me. This one's got more of a um, pearlescence to it, like whip soap does. So I'm not sure if this has already been whipped up a little bit, or this one just needs time to... Um, let, which is a, a better word than rot, <laughs> which is a term that people use for, salt makers use for, um, for aging a product like cream soap. Um, so we'll come back to this. They do not look the same right away. I'm not sure if they're even going to. Um, we will see. It's 
also almost has an almost gray appearance. So I don't know. We'll just have to see if it whips up and does the same thing or not. We'll see this in the morning. Come back to it and give it a look. It almost looks like this one has a pearlizer added to it, but it might just be, I don't know, it looks exactly like my pearlizer. I can make it look like that right now, um, if that's all it is, but I think steric acid actually changes it to give it that kind of look. We'll see. We will see. It's still quite warm. I don't want to waste a drop. All right, come back a little later. So I brought in some other foaming bath butter for you to see, a slightly different uh, Windy Point. This one came from Windy Point in Alberta. This one came from Sapphire Blue. Um, and this is the one that we made yesterday. And we're just going to compare them a little bit. All right, so this one has a little bit of a glossy texture and it's very, very dense. All right, so this one definitely is very, very dense. Okay. Wipe that off. We'll get into this one, which is a lot lighter. I don't know if it was fluffed up before it was put in here or what, but a pound is a pound is a pound. Um, so that was what that one looks like. Got it softer, lighter. This one is, sorry, now I'm mixing them, more dense. Um, this one's a kilogram and that one's a pound. And this little guy that I made here, I believe is over a pound. That's what my homemade body butter looks like. It's more like this one. And it's starting to get a little bit of the sparkly look to it. I don't know if you can see. But that's the steric acid, I believe. And it should continue to happen as it sets. I'm going to give this about a week before I do anything with it. I might even whip it up and pipe it into a Thing. I don't know. Let's see. Now, um, so this is the base that we made from scratch. And yeah, it's getting whiter. It's not really getting whiter. It's getting more sparkly, I guess. <laughs> it's got that um, pearlescence that it's finally starting to develop. And I didn't add any sparkle. So let's use a little bit, just a wee bit, and let's see what kind of bubbles we get. <laughs> oh, I'm liking the bubbles, guys. I don't know if you can see the bubbles. Lots and lots of bubbles. So if that whips up, and add butters to it or sugar to it. I like the homemade formula. I like, I like how bubbly it is. Let's just wipe that off, compare it to the commercial product. Oh, it's even more foamy, look at that. That, look at that, that's really nice too. And I've already tried, obviously, as you can see half that jar is gone, lots from the sapphire blue one. That's what I made the, uh, Cotton candy soap with is that one. All right, so we'll come back when I'm ready to make a project with it and show you what kind of performance it uh, it has. Um, is it cheaper to make it yourself? This cost me fifteen dollars for a kilogram plus shipping. This I had to buy a whole bunch of stuff, but I already had the steric acid. I don't know. 
we'll see. I'll have to go do the math in ingredients versus um, buying it pre-made. Sure was fun though to see the whole process um, come together. There's my homemade foaming bath whip. And there's a few, I'm gonna put a few, um, all of my recipes that I found online, plus a link to a purchase recipe, which I will also be testing here online. I will see if it's even closer or even better. Um, this recipe was from Lana Solhatch.